The truth is that we could be talking about the seasons and the wheel of the year and the eight Sabbaths because there's so much information. We can actually do just one course on those two topics. So I'm going to try to cover some of the main topics or basics of those so you know why um, the seasons and the wheel of the year, why is it formed that way, and some of the mythology or uh, history associated with it. So um, witches and other pagans have various mythological cycles that follow the wheel of the year. Uh, there's no official mythology and often they intertwine in happy confusion. So it is, um, it is not logical or consistent. However, a uh, few witches might care about that. Um, so there's uh, some myths about the wheel of the year. Myth cycle one is that the oak king and the holy king, the oak king rules half of the year from the winter solstice or Yule to the summer solstice or Letha. And then uh, he's challenged by the holy king they battle fiercely, the old king is overthrown, and the holy king rules until Yule. The resurrected old king battles him in turn and takes the crown until Letha, and so on. Mer uh, the mid cycle number two is the birth, life, and death of the sun god. The sun god is born of the mother goddess of Yule, grows to young manhood, and takes the maiden goddess as his lover at Beltane, reaches his greatest strength, Aletha, and becomes the green god, and sacrifices himself to the harvest at Lucknesat, the his reward at Yule. You have to think that all these myths, as you can see, are sort of like history that people in probably agriculture or ancient times used to tell um, as part of the, the myth or the cycle, the legend of the wheel of the year. Now, mid-cycle number three, um, the mating mother and crown faces of the goddess. The goddess is the mother of Jewel, transforms to the maiden in the spring, grows into her power as the mother once more by Letha, and ages to become the crown in the autumn, and then mother again at Jewel. There is a Scottish variant of this, uh, which is called the winter hag. The winter hag pursues the spring maiden, but the hag's power dwindles as the spring advances. The spring maiden matures into mother through the summer, and then gradually transforms to the hag again through autumn, and the hag chases the maiden again as the spring begins. And then mid-cycle number four is the horn god and the goddess divide the year. The horn god rules during the fall and winter, the cold season of hunting, darkness and death, and the goddess reigns during the spring and summer, the warm season of fertility, growth, and life. As you can see, a lot of these myths are associated either with age or maybe with the masculine, the power of the masculine, the power of the feminine. All these mythological models for the reality of the changing seasons. As with all myths, there are perspectives or truth within each, even though no one of them is literally true. Because witches don't need to believe literally in our myths and legends, we can embrace the discoveries of science without worrying whether some ancient tale given by God is contradicted. Myths are insights into the human condition, and you're free to explore the ones that seem meaningful to you and use them in your rituals. Getting back to the Sabbaths, they are the celebration of life and nature. Also of change. Our ancestors worked hard between the holidays and then played hard when it was time for a break. Let's look at how they understood each Sabbath and what the Sabbath might mean for us today. I'm going to do a little bit of each one because like I said there is so much information on each one that we could have literally one course on each one of the parts of the wheel or the Sabbaths. Yule is the celebration of winter solstice, and as you can see on your picture, it begins on the 21st of December during the winter solstice, um, what we call Christmas. That is the shortest day and longest night of the year. This is what some witches call the dark time. 
This is a six-week period beginning at Samhain, moving into the darkest time of the year. What it means to you is, in the old days, winter evenings might be spent mending or harness or fixing farm tools. So this is what some of our ancestors used to do. Now you can work on your indoor projects during this time, such as making herbal oils or researching a school paper or learning new software for your computer. Giving and receiving are issues a dual. Why can't you give to your family, friends, and community? What do they need? Also, what is being offered to you that might enrich your life and you could graciously receive? Rebirth is the primary theme at this time. Every year offers the first beginning. What kind of person will you be reborn this coming year? So this is a time in which witches normally meditate on their lifestyle, their habits, their character, and persona, and decide what the new you will be like. The deities for the season are many. Mother goddesses are Gaia, Demeter, Inanna, Istar, Pachamama, and Aditi. The sun gods can be Ra, Horus, Helios, Apollo, Bel, Shamas, the Oak King, and Sol Invictus. Imbolc, also called Oiv Melk or Candlemas, is celebrated on, on about February 2nd and is a festival of the returning light. We really can tell at this time that the sun is getting stronger and the days are getting longer. A spring is just around the corner and signs of new plant life begin to emerge. The Celtic names Imbolc and Oilmec mean in the belly and Ibs milk, for this is the time that the sheep are giving birth. It is a time sacred to the Bridget, the triple Irish goddess of healing, inspiration, and smithcraft. She is a fire goddess and has aspects and body so sovereign and the skills of warriors. Sacred springs and wells all over the Emerald Isle are dedicated to her. What this means to us? Invoke is a time of cleansing and purification, perhaps the origin of a spring cleaning. It's a good time to clean our house and your life, to refresh, renew, and rededicate yourself to those things that you love. Most, many pagans take this opportunity to clean and consecrate the ritual tools, include candles for their magical work, and gardening. The deities for the season are Hephaestus, Vulcan, and Whalen. Healers could be Isis, Hygieia, Aesclepius, Apollo, by Zuzan, Ankatha, the Ankek, and Inspiration, Sarabasti, and Gideon. Ostara. Ostara was named for the Norse goddess Iostre, and is celebrated in the spring equinox, usually around March 21st. A spring is finally here, and the days are getting warmer. Fertility, birth, and new beginnings are the themes. And we normally celebrate this Ostara with eggs and bunnies, representing the tremendous fecundity of the earth at this time. This is something that the Christianity has embraced as Easter. This is a time for planting and not only for physical seeds, but also seeds of those projects you want to accomplish during the year. What it means to you is that action has replaced planning and the gathering of energy. So this is the time to manifest your projects in something tangible and physical in a way. Activities for Stara that have been done for hundreds of years will be to decorate hardboard eggs with magical symbols, then hide them and hunt them. Does that sound familiar? Deities for the season, Eostre, Kore, and Persephone. Moon deities, Selene, Diana, Hecate, Luna, and Sin. Beltane. Beltane arrives around May 1st 
and sometimes is called May Day. It is the celebration of love, lust, sexuality, sensuality, and life force. All plants are growing, the animals have given birth, and their young are kicking up their heels. The springtime work continues, but we pause here to celebrate and enjoy. This is where you might see in some pagan festivals how the uh, May King and May Queen are crowned and the maple is danced. Centuries ago, Babies born on May Day Union were considered specially blessed and they were often named Robin. This is a time to rejoice for us. Deities of the season are the love gods such as Eros, Cupid and Kamadeva, love goddesses such as Aphrodite, Venus, Freya, Erzulai and Aster. And of course, let's don't forget a divine loving couple, Krishna and Radha. Litha. Litha is the summer solstice around June 21st and marks the longest day and shortest night of the year. This is the ideal time to focus on your power, what it will bring you the greatest harvest. What are your priorities? These are the longest day of the year, so you have more hours to work and play. Ask yourself during this time, what are my sources of power? What are my strengths? And how am I using them to my best advantage? For women, it's a good season to get in touch with your active and accomplishing masculine side. Luknasad, or Lamas, is the first of the three harvest festivals celebrated around August 1st. This is the harvest where God, the God of the grain gives life so that we may live through the winter. The things are self-sacrifice for the community or individual initiation to a higher level of spiritual existence. This is a time to allocate, a store, and use resources. The wise management of wealth becomes an issue of harvest time when once again have material prosperity. This was a very special day in Celtic times, such as it was the special day of Log, a Celtic sun god who was also high king of Ireland and the Tuatha de Danann, or the people of the goddess Danu. He was a master of all skills, warrior, healer, blacksmith, and more. According to the legend, he started the Olympic style games in honor of his mother, Tailtu. What it means to us. Finally, you are reaping tangible results from all your work, and why is your personal harvest delay? Are you harvesting something you didn't plan for? Think about self-sacrifice on this time. What sacrifices would you make for your family and community? What sacrifices will you make in order to learn, grow, and stretch yourself? Deities are here with many skills, and some of them have to do with dying and resurrecting gods, such as Baal, Adonis, Melkar, Osiris, Mithras, Dugmuzi, or Tamuf. Deities of many skills, such as Mercury, Hermes, Minerva, or the goddess of the thousand works, and the Wallawak sisters. Also, earth and green goddesses are important in Luknasat, such as Gaia, Mahimata, Pachamama, Changing Woman series, Demeter, and Telti. Mabon, or the Fall Equinox, is the second harvest festival about September 21st. The gardens and orchards are giving out their ripening bounty. Days are growing shorter. Days and nights are the equal length, and there is full crispness in the air. This is the time to share our abundance and be grateful. This is called the Pagan Thanksgiving. We're moving towards completion of our goals, trying loose ends. But we make time to eat, drink, and be merry. The holiday is named for Mabon Abmudron, who 
who appear in the Mavinogium, a collection of wellsmiths. He is the divine son. According to legend, King Arthur needs Mabon's hunting skills to track a great boar, but the young man is missing. After many trials, the king and his men rescue Mabon from his prison, and he aids them in the hunt and the fulfillment of the quest. This is a time in which we are reaping rewards for our efforts. It's time to count our blessings and show our gratitude to all your family, friends, and co-workers who have helped you on the year's journey. It's also time to finish up this year's projects. The Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu in the Tao Te Ching said, The wise are as careful in the completion as in the beginning of a task, thus they do not fail. Make your priority the careful completion of your work before Samhain. Samhain or so when is the most solemn of the Sabbaths and almost always celebrated on October 31st. It is the third harvest, the animal harvest, when domesticated animals, no likely to make it through the winter, were killed and their meat preserved for the winter. This was also a time for hunting and to call all and infirm from the wild herds. It is true that at Sanheim the veil between the worlds is thin, so it becomes easier to communicate with the spirits of the dead. Therefore it is a time for remembering our ancestors and those who have died in the last year. In some traditions, a damn silent supper is held to honor the departer, or shrines are set up for loved ones who have passed on. Remember, there are people that talk to your disease. In the beginning of the dark time, when a witch may turn inward for quiet contemplation and do divination for the coming year, being quiet can be difficult during the Mago holiday madness. But this period of near hibernation can restore your spirit. This period has to do with family lineage and ancestry. Honor your elders. Remember your beloved dead. Meditate on death, transition, and the afterlife, the spirit world, and reincarnation. Think about yourself. What will be your legacy to your descendants? Will they have a reason to remember you and admire you or to take you as a role model? Deities for the season are the underworld gods such as Hades, Osiris, Toph, Anubis, and Mananam Maclair. Some underworld goddesses, it is Kigal, Hel, Persephone, Seribden, Hecate, Silket, Maat, Kali, and the Morrigan. I hope you enjoy knowing about the Sabbaths. We will learn in a minute about the cycles of the moon and the power of the pentagram. I'll see you then.